Section 8.4, Properties of Logarithms. Our objectives are to um, use the properties of logarithms. Now, the properties of logarithms, um, if you look here, you already did that other sheet that we had to look at the properties of logarithms. We have the product property, which states, if you have two logs in the same bases, you can multiply um, what you're taking the log of and write it all under one base. So this would be written as the log base B of m times n. And for the quotient property, if you're subtracting two logs, then you can rewrite it using division. So this would be the log base b of m divided by n. And notice that the order does matter. The m is on top and the n is in the um, denominator, so make sure you write it in the correct order there. And for the last one, we have um, the power property, which states if we have the log base b of m to the x power, we can take this x and move it in front. So this would become x times the log base b of m. Now, also recall that we talked about these properties of logarithms over here with the log base b of b. Remember, the log of any base of the same number is always equal to a value of 1. And you can show that be rewritten in exponential form, so b to what power gives you b? Well, b to the first power, so 1 would be your answer. For the next one, we remember we also said the log base b of 1 is always equal to 0, because b to the 0 power would give you 1, so anything to the 0 power is 1, and just like over here, anything to the first power would give you that same thing back. Now, we can use these properties to rewrite logarithmic expressions. To write a logarithmic equation as a single logarithm, you're going to follow these steps. Um, you're going to simplify from left to right using the properties of logs. And then you're going to answer, for your answer, would only have a log in the equation. You're going to have no numbers in front of the log because those become exponents. No rational exponents, um, so no fractions. Remember that x to the 2 third is a rational exponent, which we can rewrite in radical form. This would be the cube root of x squared, because remember the number in the denominator becomes your index. Um, and then we're also going to then, if we can, simplify those radical forms. So let's do a little bit of practice. State the property of logarithms that was used to rewrite each expression. So if we look at the left and right side, so here if you look at the um, left side, that's simplified because there's only one log in the equation. And so I'm going to take a look at the right side to see how I got to the left side. Now, if I have two logs that are being added, remember we can take the number here and here and multiply them using our product properties because this would become the log um, and, of course, remember when the base is not written, it's base 10. So log base 10 of 2 times 3, which is equal to the log base 10 of 6. And so now that's equal to the other side. And again, we use the product property. So then for the next one, um, you notice that the right side of the equation is written as 1 log base b of 8. So we're going to try to see how we can get the left side of the equation into the right side. So if you remember that we just said, there's no numbers allowed in front of the log. So you always want to go from left to right in your equation. So first, I'm going to always take these up as exponents. Because remember, when we're simplifying things, we always deal with exponents first. So this would become the log base b of 4 to the third power minus the log base b of 2 to the third power. And then, of course, we can um, go ahead and simplify this still. Remember that anytime I have two logs and I am subtracting them, then I'm going to divide the two numbers. But before I even do that, I can um, go ahead and simplify this. So this would become the log base b of 64 minus the log base b of 8. And then we're not done. If we have two logs that are being subtracted, we can then use our quotient property to divide the two numbers that we're taking the log of and write it as one single logarithmic equation. So this would be the log base b of 64 divided by 8. Remember that it, you go in order. The number that comes first you put on top, and the number that's in second goes in the denominator. And then we're not finished because we can simplify 64 divided by 8, which is 8. So this becomes the log base b of 8, which is now equal to the other side. 
And so what properties do we would use? We use the power property first. And then we use the quotient property. All right, so let's look at the next one. For the next one, um, if you look, the left side of our equation is written as a single logarithm. So that means we're going to try to see if we can get the right side into the left side. So in order to do that, remember, anytime I have numbers in front, those become exponents. So I always want to deal with that first. So this would be the log base b of x minus the log base b of y. Now I'm going to go from left to right in my equation. So for this one, if we have two logs that are, and then, sorry, this should be an x squared, two logs that are being subtracted, we can divide the numbers. So this would become the log base b, and we write it as a single logarithm. So this would become x squared over y. And now the left and right side both equal each other. So first, again, we did the power property. And again, we did the quotient property. So now let's practice some of these without having to state each of the properties and just simplifying them. So for example, we want to write each expression as a single logarithm. So um, just to go back. Remember that we have these rules to write a logarithm equation as a single logarithm. Simplify it from left to right using the properties of logs. And the answer, again, will only have one log in the equation, no numbers in front of the log, no rational exponents. If you do have them, write them as radicals. Now, if we look at this equation um, for a, we have the log base 4 of 64 minus the log base 4 of 16. So for this problem that we have, we can use our quotient property because it's being subtracted and divide the two numbers that I'm taking the log of. So this would become the log base 4 of 64 divided by 16. And of course, we can simplify 64 divided by 16. This becomes the log base 4 of 4. Now, the problem didn't say to evaluate the log. If it asks us to evaluate this, then we can simplify it further because we know that the log base 4 of the same number, 4, would be equal to a value of 1 because if you rewrite it in exponential form, 4 to the first power um, would be equal to 4. But again, it didn't ask us to evaluate it. It just says write each expression as a single logarithm. So this would be my single logarithm. If you look at b here, same thing. I always like to take the numbers up first as exponents. So that's using my power property. So this is the log base 5 of x to the 6 plus the log base 5 of y. If I have two logs that are being added, I can simplify them into one log by multiplying the numbers that I'm taking the log of. So this would be x to the 6 times y. Now for this, I don't have any other logs in my equation. I wrote it, wrote it as one single log. There's no numbers in front of the log, and I don't have any fractional exponents. So this right here would be my solution. For the next one, we could keep going. So again, same thing. This number would come up as an exponent. So this would become the log of base 10, when it's not written, of 2 to the third power, plus the log of 4 minus the log of 16. We can simplify 2 to the third, it's 8. So the log base 10 of 8 plus the log base 10 of 4 minus the log base 10 of 16. Then you go from left to right in your equation. So for this, anytime you're adding two logs, you're going to multiply the numbers. When you're subtracting, you're going to end up dividing the numbers. So this gives us the log base 10 of 8 times 4 minus the log of 16. 8 times 4 is 32. And then we're not done. Anytime I have two logs that are being subtracted with the same base, I can um, divide the two numbers that I'm taking the log of. So this would be the log base 10 of 32 divided by 16. 32 goes on top because it comes first in the equation. And then, of course, we can simplify. 32 divided by 16 is 2. So this becomes the log base 10 of 2. 
Now again, remember, we don't normally write base 10 in there, so if you wanted to, you could also write the log base 10 of 2. Those two th statements are equivalent, but we don't usually write the log of base 10. We leave it blank, and it means base 10. So that would be my solution. So again, I usually take the numbers in front up as exponents. Then I go from left to right in the equation. Things that are being added as two logs become one log, and you multiply the numbers that you're taking the log of. Things that are being subtracted, you write it as one log by dividing the two numbers you're taking the log of. So if you look at D here, I want you guys to do this problem. and then we'll go over the answer in class. Now, so we went from expanded form to writing something as a single logarithm. So now we're going to do the reverse. To write a logarithmic equation in expanded form, you're going to write the log as a sum or difference using the properties of logarithms. And again, for this one, now we're doing the backwards. We don't want radicals in your final answer answers and no exponents. So everything that's an exponent, you're going to want to put in front of your equation. So remember here, we didn't want numbers in front and we didn't want to have things added or subtracted. You always wanted to write something as a single logarithm. Well, now we're doing the opposite of what we did here. So for example, expand each logarithm. So for this first one, we have log base 2 of 7b. So now if you look here, how can we expand this? Well, I know that 7 times b can be expanded by using the um, product property. So if we separate that with addition, we can write this as the log base 2 of 7 plus the log base 2 of b. So this would be my simplified answer. Or my, not, sorry, not my simplified answer, it's my expanded answer because we're expanding. For the next one, we have the log of, and it's not written for the base, so it's base 10, of y divided by 3 quantity squared. So for this one, um, you can do a couple of different ways to simplify this. Um, what I would do first is use my properties of exponents to simplify and write the log base 10 of, this would be y squared to divided by 3 to the second power. And then you can simplify 3 to the second power because it's 9. So you have the log of y squared over 9. Now for this, anytime I have two logs that are being um, divided, I can separate them using subtraction. So then the next part would be the log of y squared minus the log base 10 of 9. And then I can still simplify this. If I simplify this even um, further, I would end up with this number here. We don't like exponents, so we want to always bring the exponent down in front. So that becomes 2 times the log of y minus the log of 9. So you can write your answer like this, or if we wanted to, we can um, still simplify this further because 9 is the same thing as 3 squared, which is what we simplified up here. So you could also write the log of 9 as instead. So we have the 2 log of y minus, this would be the log of um, 3 squared. And you could then take this number in front, because anytime you have exponents, they go in front of the log when you're writing in an expanded form. So this would be 2 times the log of y minus 2 times the log of 3. And this would be your expanded form. Um, normally, if we can simplify the log of a number, such as 9, simplifies into 3 squared, because 3 is a smaller base than 9, um, usually we try to do that. So that's why this would be my final answer. However, um, this is still correct over here, but we like to try to simplify as far as we can. For C, then, I have the log base 7 of a to the third power times um, b to the fourth power. Now, for this, because a and b are both two different powers. I can't just bring the powers in front of the log just yet. Um, I would have to first separate the a and the b using addition. Um, so for this, this become the log base 7 of a to the third power. Since a and b are being multiplied, I separate it with addition and write it as the log base 7 of b to the fourth power. And then we can use our um, our power property of logarithms, because remember that we don't like to have powers here, so those become down and become numbers in front of our logs. So this would become 3 times the log 
base 7 of A plus 4 times the log base 7 of um, B. And this would be my expanded answer. So again, there are um, nothing else that we can separate with mul from multiplication and division. Um, there are also no exponents, and we don't have any radicals in our answer. So then I know that is the simplified version. So let's do a little bit more practice of this. So we're going to expand the following logarithms. So now if you look at number one, we have a radical in the equation. So we don't want to have radicals in our equation when we're writing in expanded form because, remember, we can write radicals in exponent, as exponents. So this would become the log base 7 of 6, and I'm going to write this in parentheses, x to the 1 half power. And then something that has um, the log of something that we are multiplying, we can separate it using addition. So this would be the log base 7 of 6 plus the log base 7 of x to the 1 half power. Now I'm still not done because remember we don't like to have um, exponents. So this becomes down and goes in front of my log. So this would become the log base 7 of 6 plus 1 half times the log base 7 of x, and this would be my expanded form. 6 does not simplify any further. Um, 6 is as simplified as we can get that into. Um, we could actually simplify 6 into 2 times 3 and then separate some more, but that's not really necessary, so we can leave our answer like this. For the next one, we have the log, and then base is not written, so it's base 10 times of 7 times 3x minus 2 quantity squared. So then for this problem, I'm not going to um, foil that out because I'm trying to expand. So the first thing I'm going to do is because these are two things are being multiplied, I'm going to separate them with addition. So this would become the log base 10 of 7 plus the log base 10 of 3x minus 2 quantity squared. Now for this, we don't like to have exponents. So this exponent that I have right here moves to the front, and becomes like this. Now, if you look at this problem, if you look at the log of 3x minus 2, notice that um, we don't really have any multiplication except for the 3 times the x. However, because it's being subtracted by 2, and we don't have a property for the log of something being um, subtracted, the log of whatever you're taking, it's when it's either just multiplication or division, then um, we can't simplify it any further. So this would be my final answer right here. Then the next one that we have, we have a couple more things. So for this one, we have multiplication and division. Normally, if we have both, I'm going to do the division first. It helps me separate the problem. Um, just like when you're multiplying and dividing things, you usually try to get rid of things that are divided first. So for this one, I would rewrite this as, and it's the log base 10 since the, the base is not written. So this would be the log of 5x, the number on top. Um, goes first, minus, and then the number in the bottom goes second, so the log base 10 of 4y. And then because 5 times x is being multiplied and 4 times y is being multiplied, we can simpl simplify that even more, or excuse me, I should say expand that even more using addition. So this would be the log of base 10 of 5 plus the log base 10 of x, and we're subtracting it from, and we're going to expand this over here, so I'm going to write it in parentheses, the so log base 10 of 4 plus the log base 10 of y, because that whole thing was being um, subtracted, that's why I put it in parentheses, because I had to remember to distribute my negative to the second one as well, so this becomes the log base 10 of 5 plus the log base 10 of x minus the log base 10 of 4, and then minus the log base 10 of y, and this would be my answer. So then we have one more to go. So for this problem number four, I want you to see if you guys can do this problem, and then we'll check it in class. So you, again, you're expanding this. So remember, just to recap, when you are expanding something, you want it to write as a sum 
or a difference using the properties of logarithms, no radicals in your final answers, and no exponents. You always want to bring those in front. And when we're simplifying logs and writing it as a single logarithm, we're following these rules. So simplifying from left to right, the answers will only have one log in the equation. You don't want any more than one when you're simplifying it. No numbers in front of the log and no um, rational exponents. You would want to write it into radical form. So again, don't forget to do those two problems. Bring this with you to class, and we will do some more practice.